Assalamu alaikum, my dear sisters. I hope you're well. Welcome to episode 8 of Her Story Inspires podcast. If you're new here, my name's Hana, and alhamdulillah, it was an absolutely amazing episode. It's actually our most viewed episode over on Instagram TV with over 3,000 views in just a week. Subhanallah. Dr. Hiba started off the episode by sharing her eczema story as a two-year-old, I believe, to how her eczema escalated to tropical steroid withdrawal, TSW for short. And if you're thinking, what's that? Then have a listen or watch the episode to find out more. It was so educational and honestly so inspiring. Please share this episode with all your contacts, especially those with eczema, because there was a lot that was shared in this episode that I believe will be of an absolute importance for them to know. Um, so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless and honour Dr. Hiba and her family and all of you who are listening and watching this episode. That's it from me, from me now, my lovelies. Take care of yourselves. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah. We all have a story. A story of pain, a story of shame, guilt, sadness and grief. A story of ups and downs, highs and lows that gave birth to who you are today. That empowered you to stand tall despite how broken you felt inside. And it's this that makes you special, beautiful, strong and inspiring. Her Story Inspires is a weekly online show where women will be sharing their story of courage to leave you feeling inspired and more importantly to know that you're not alone. All right, ready to begin, yeah? Yes, yes. All right, so let's begin. So, Bismillah, wa salatu salam ala rasulillah. رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته هبا welcome to uh, her story inspires how are you وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm good الحمد لله how are you doing I'm good الحمد لله I'm really really well and really excited for today um, <laughs> so for those of you who are not aware uh, tonight inshallah we've got Dr. Hiba Khalid so Dr. Hiba Khalid is a dentist by profession and she's a student of psychology from an Islamic perspective and she's um, currently um, going through a healing from a condition known as uh, tropical st- uh, steroid withdrawal um, TSW for short and she's raising awareness for it Um, And and I'm really, really excited to kind of know more. Um, Before we get into that, let's um, kind of go way back to Hiba as a child. What was she like? Um, What was I like? I was very chatty. uh, So that's probably going to come across in this uh, video tonight. And (laughs) we moved around a lot. So I had to actually... um, get used to making friends really quickly so I think socially that helped to develop me um to become quite extroverted I guess and just not scared of people um yeah so that was me as a child (laughs) inshallah and I remember you said that you moved around a lot in the UK yeah well that's because um I was I'm the daughter of medic parents so uh, usually the way that goes is that they move from training post to training post and it's not common for them at the beginning of their career anyway to get the same post in the same part of the country so we moved around uh, I was born in Birmingham we moved to Lancaster Preston Manchester Cardiff Colchester and then I moved to London with uh, university and then my family followed so we're, we're based here now oh wow all over like the north of the UK <laughs> yeah I left my accents all in those places as well and I've just adopted the south uh, south uh, yeah accent, I guess it, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was gonna say because you don't have the accent at all um no. okay mashallah and then um so you, you went to uni you graduated mashallah in uh, in dentistry and yeah. what happened after that um so before dentistry I did biomedical science and then after that I did um dentistry and Mm. so I did my training year of dentistry and then everything stopped because of my topical steroid withdrawal so Mm. that it was kind of like a lifelong journey but it really started in my final year of uh, dentistry Mm. Um, so the way that came about was I 
so I what happened was I had some minor eczema patches just on my inner elbow creases which is quite mm. normal for any child especially when they're kind of weaning off breast uh, breast milk onto solids and uh, I do have food allergies anyway so it was only very minor the doctor gave my mum um mild hydrocortisone very low dose and because my parents are doctors we only ever used it according to the instructions and even less than that actually so we used it maximum one or two uh days in a row my mum said that the longest amount of time I've used it was three days and then I go long periods of time without using it but um that sort of happened on and off until I was about 15 16 years old and then after mm. that I stopped all steroids and I got put onto an immunosuppressant uh, ointment which was called protopic which I was told was a safer non-steroidal alternative uh but later on I'll get on to uh how that really actually added a lot of um bad symptoms and experiences of its mm. own um so yeah in my final year of dental school I was using the protopic and I noticed that on my hand I was getting rashes that weren't really clearing up with the cream and a few other people as well who don't have any eczema when they are constantly washing their hands around gloves and it's happening now I think lots of people uh with COVID who are having to do lots of hand washing they've noticed mm. their skin can get very um irritated and a bit sore and red so that was happening with me and I wasn't sure if I'd had an allergy or something that I wasn't aware of so the uh staff on my clinical floor sent me to occupational health to get some patch testing done on my back where they just um put out like a grid of all potential allergens in the dental environment and also other things as well like cosmetic products and and anything that could be an irritant really and it came up negative to all of that so it wasn't an allergy so then I was trying to figure out maybe it's something that I'm eating that I haven't discovered yet that I'm allergic to so I started a 12-week course which was an elimination diet blandest mm. time of my life where I had to really restrict my diet to just a few foods no spice or anything um and uh the idea was my skin was supposed to improve over time yeah yeah um, but actually because I was supposed to not take any medication at all uh if you take any steroids if you take any uh, immunosuppressants you're not going to be able to see if you are reacting to mm. <clears throat> any potential allergens I wasn't using medication for the first time in my life for that long um so as the weeks were going by I was deteriorating and my skin was getting worse but I was also getting weird symptoms like I was I had insomnia um I started to get a bit swollen as well um and then just things that I was like I think this is a bit more than an allergy at this point so I wasn't I seemed to be flaring randomly and then I would be fine the other like another day when I'd eat the same food so I thought well this I don't know what's happening but I looked into the troubleshooting section of the program that I was doing and it said if you've ever had an experience using something like steroids then it could be topical steroid withdrawal but mm. I was thinking this can't be me because I haven't used steroids for 10 years so that's plenty of time for it to leave my system right I thought it can't be that so then I then looked into the protopic or the immunosuppressant that I was using and uh indeed i found that some people had created a, like a facebook group for having going through withdrawal symptoms from that but then i realized that because i had used steroids and then straight away i was put on to protopic the reactions that i was having at that time it all started to click that wait what i thought was worsening spreading eczema but with random other symptoms that was the start of my tsw my topical steroid withdrawal which was being suppressed all that time in my 10 years of using mm. the immunosuppressant and now that I've stopped using that and the effect of it has finally kind of left my system it was presenting itself in this explosion of withdrawal symptoms um that none of us ever heard about or knew about and it was really quite scary so I managed to work for the first year um of yeah. my uh you know after uni I was doing my um training gear but I had to leave that early because towards sort of April May June time I started to get really swollen and then my skin was just splitting open and I was oozing all over the place it's horrible and mm. oh yeah sorry just a uh, disclaimer for people who don't who're not familiar with topical steroid withdrawal it's quite graphic so I'm sorry if the descriptions are not that pleasant to listen to but yeah so that was happening and obviously it's an infection control risk if I'm in a dental environment with o- all these open wounds and not to mention I wasn't sleeping um mm. but that was dangerous to work with patients with sharp objects in their mouth and i'm just i have the worst brain fog i'm so fatigued i'm so out of it um my hands i couldn't bend my fingers without the splints 
cracking and splitting open and just it was it was a nightmare so I had to leave my training post early but I did get my certificate because alhamdulillah I managed to finish the majority of the year so um, okay. I'd done enough procedures but yeah since then I haven't been able to go back to dentistry and things got worse I actually deteriorated to the point where I was bed bound mm. actually bed bound for four months um I was completely unrecognizable I think I sent you some photos actually yeah of how this look and I remember <laughs> the response from everyone when they see how bad I actually was it's all the same and they don't know each other they all say you look like you're dying <laughs> it felt like that as well and then I haven't really been able to leave the house um you know for like two years and then obviously lockdowns happen now so I'm used to it but that's been my life since June 2017 but alhamdulillah I'm getting much better um still not fully there uh yeah. it's rolling today <laughs> you could probably tell but uh, yeah, yeah. Mashallah. <clears throat> subhanallah you know what um I do remember when uh, you messaged me I think you messaged me about my mum uh Allah yeah. Hamad had passed away around the time and I think that's how you got in contact with me and I remember thinking like Hiba where have you been <laughs> it's been <laughs> it's so <good>. long <laughs> yeah uh -huh. and then you explained like you know what you were going through and I remember thinking um I remember, you, I remember I, like, I, I, like at the time I didn't know much but I remember just hearing the word eczema Mm -hmm. And then that kind of just made me rem remember, like, my cousins. And they're the only ones in our whole family who actually have eczema. Like, there's three, there's three, there's three sisters. And mm -hmm. they're the only ones who have it. And I remember sharing with you that they used this you know, steroid cream. And you were like, just, you know, tell them to just stop using it. Mm -hmm. um, but what would you advise, Hippa? Like, if there's a mum listening now, mm -hmm. and you've got a small child, you know, two, three years old, maybe, say, and, and they have... Um, you know, this eczema mark, and they've been told, um, you know, they must use this cream, um, otherwise, it will, be, it will be seen as like negligence on the part of the mother. Like, yeah, what would you advise, or I don't know, what would you say? Well, first of all, if you look at the guidelines which are inside the leaflet for, you know, guidance for use, how to use the steroids that come with all of them, and even if you look at the NHS website and everything, it specifically states not to be used for children under the age of 10, not to be used on the face, not to be used in the groin region, unless your doctor says it's okay. So doctors are always saying it's okay, but a lot of the time, unfortunately, they're not actually that familiar with topical steroid withdrawal. Um, and there's reasons for that, and I'll get into that um, a bit later on, inshallah. But mm. I would say that understand first how steroids work. So this is something that the doctors will be able to tell you as well. Um, because I'm not anti-medicine and I'm not anti, you know, <laughs> like Western medicine or anything like that. But the way that steroids work, they, they have different um, functions and different um, ways that they, they work on your immune system and your blood vessels. But essentially eczema would be uh, an inflammation and redness and itching. Uh, steroids will constrict your blood vessels so it's pulling them away from the sur first surface of the skin reducing the redness reducing the um, inflammation but it's just a temporary relief and it's just a suppression um, but then as soon as you stop using it the blood vessels will then just spring back open and then you'll still if you haven't identified the reason for the inflammation you're probably going to end up in a cycle where you're going to have to keep using it and using it and using it because mm. say for, so so my mom is a GP right and she lived with me um well, I lived with her my whole life. But when I was about six, seven, eight, I had started to get a bit more food allergies. And she noticed that when I would eat something that had, for example, nuts, traces or, or something with sesame in it, that my eczema would flare. And then it would calm down after I had spent enough time away from the allergen, right? So in her practice, what she would do, when parents would bring their children in, especially the young babies, because they're more susceptible to absorbing the steroids and then presenting with um, the severe adverse reactions, she would then say to them, book in an appointment with me again after two weeks. But in that two weeks, if it was a child that went to school, for example, only give your child food that you've made. So just pack lunches, avoid school dinners. And then when you come back, if the skin is still the same, if it's still bad, I'm going to refer you on either to the dermatologist or to an allergy specialist. Yeah. And yeah. she was like, most of the time when they were to come back, they would actually be fine. Their skin would have cleared up. They wouldn't have believed it. So then that pointed to there may be something that they're allergic to, you know, that they haven't discovered. So instead of uh, referring them to the dermatologist to get steroids, my mum would then refer them to the allergy specialist to figure out what 
could be causing their skin to be flaring. Um, the other mm. thing is obviously um, having a look at, I and mean, there's a lot of harsh chemicals around us, like, you know, laundry powders, um, maybe put them on an extra rinse, uh, you know, in the, in the clothes so that the soap isn't still in the fabric and irritating the baby skin that way. Um, you know, just having a look at anything that could be triggers, but you're not going to be able to identify them if you've slapped a steroid on, because the steroid, by definition, is going to be masking the inflammation. So if your body is trying to react to something that it's not agreeing with and you're masking that then you're still going to be causing problems yeah but you just won't be able to see it so obviously speak to the doctors i'm not saying avoid the doctors i'm not saying yeah. it gets the doctors but for doctors you have to understand that the nhs especially and i know it's probably like this in other countries as well they don't have long amounts of time that they can spend with each patient um, mm. they do their best and they do a really good job but a lot of the time you know the steroids work or they feel like they work and they look like they work um, it's quick to prescribe it and um, it means that you don't have to end up having a long conversation about what you might have eaten where you might have been or maybe allergic to pets blah, 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 all of these things so mm. I think um, identifying triggers would be where I would advise first first off before going down the medication route okay all right inshallah yeah. um i just want to ask you like hiba what what is the what would you say is the difference between eczema and tsw like what's the main difference between the two so eczema happens um without uh well a lot of people don't actually know the reason that eczema is caused there are theories and people have put it down to potentially something in your genetics or or like we were talking earlier it's a it's a reaction to hmm. um, something that's irritated you. Whereas TSW can happen without any prior eczema at all. It can also happen as a result of eczema developing into topical steroid withdrawal um, because the, you know the way that uh, steroids work after you've stopped using them, it, the blood vessels will dilate open. But also uh, since the 1950s, we've got it in the medical literature that if you've taken it for something like eczema, then hmm one of the adverse effects is, and they're describing topical steroid withdrawal, an exacerbation of this eczematous type rash, amplification of it, spreading of it, and you just get worsening eczema. That's what it looks like, because it mimics it and it worsens it. Whereas if you've taken steroids for things like acne, for example, then they find that the exacerbation of symptoms that way tends to be more postular. So it mimics this, you know, the kind of spots that you get in um or the pimples you get in acne. So the, the difference is that when you take away a trigger that could be causing an eczema flare-up, yeah. Yeah. a lot of the time that does clear up the eczema. But when you've crossed over now and you have developed a dependency to the cortisol that's coming in from using these steroids and your mm. body's not able to uh, manage itself basically without these, these medications, then you can still flare with triggers, but when you've removed the triggers, you're gonna continue your withdrawal until that time period has has uh, come to an end and unfortunately it does take months to years it's not a quick thing at all mm. okay <clears throat> subhanallah yeah. um so you've been on it mashat barakallah now on the withdrawal for about nearly three three years right three and a half years yeah. mashat barakallah um but i must say you look really good though hiba masha you look really good <laughs> yeah <laughs> mashat barakallah you do masha you look really good well, um yeah, it never actually affected my face that much. So, alhamdulillah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <But just> no, barakallah <laughs> no. <laughs> alhamdulillah. Thanks, uh, thanks. May Allah grant you a quick recovery, like complete recovery, I mean, inshallah. Yeah, I'll be can. out of this, inshallah. Um, also, like, you remember, like, I told you yesterday on the phone, I explained to you, like, a story. Um, like, my husband, one of my husband's work colleagues, uh, his brother, subhanallah, he, he had eczema all his life. Mm -hmm. Similar story to, to what you just said, and he was using steroids you know to kind of help um you know keep the eczema at bay um and then it got to a point where certain parts of his skin was like really thin and due to the you know using the steroid and then what the doctor would do was that he would take you know skin from another part of his body and just kind of just you know place it in, in the thin part but mm -hmm. still you know but he was still obviously still use the steroid cream which is obviously thinning his skin so this was like continuously going for years and years and years um, until the point where he just couldn't take it anymore and, and he took his life, subhanAllah. Yeah. Um, there was something that I didn't share with you um, as well in regards to the story was that the doctor was recently asked, uh, you know, like, did do you think he actually really needed those, um, those surgeries where you're just, you know, taking skin from one part and place it in another? 
And the doctor recently was saying, um, you know what, actually looking at it, he probably didn't need it. Um, SubhanAllah. And I just thought, what a loss of life because he was really young. He was only in his 20s. Um, so this is why um, when I look at the work you're doing, like raising awareness about TSW, um, it can really save life. It can really okay. save someone's life. Um, yeah. And this is why like, I'm really honoured that you came on today in today's podcast to talk about this. And inshallah, like, you'll reach the heart of the person who needs it. Um, so kind of love. Um, okay, let's um, move on a bit. Um, I want to talk about um, how you have mentally managed TSW. Well, I think not very well, but... Um, well, I mean, I say that, but mentally and emotionally, it's actually been more difficult for me physically. Um, yeah. So physically, it is really difficult because you do watch yourself deteriorating and it's like, you know, your hair will start falling out. Like, alhamdulillah, my hair's growing back now, but your hair will start falling out. Your skin will just flake off. So you feel like you are literally falling apart, right? You're not able to keep it together. Um, yeah. And on top of the pain because it's so painful like if you can imagine per square inch of uh, skin you've got more than a thousand nerve endings right and your nerves it, there's a lot of nerve damage that happens in tsw so you're in so much pain you can't really you can't sleep you can't move anytime you kind of like extend your arm or you turn your neck your skin just splits open and you're in pain for <laughs> days um but mentally i'll tell you what else makes it more difficult is i mentioned this in my video that i made the gaslighting that comes um, from the medical community and we're from mm. a medical family so again I'm not against doctors but this does need to be spoken about because the amount of times that I was told this isn't real this doesn't mm. exist you're exaggerating it do you perhaps think that you might have steroid phobia which is a term that they've now coined to uh, give us a mental diagnosis for being mm. phobic of steroids right um, people don't know about it there's a lot of explaining that you have to do and going into it and telling people exactly what it is because you know I can't just disappear off the face of the earth for like two years and then tell people it's because I've got a bit of bad skin it's, it's so much more than that yeah. um, it's exhausting to try and like uh, explain to friends why it's too painful to talk to them right now because they remind you of the good times and when life was normal for you and it's just you can't you just can't um, cope with that so mentally um I don't know if this is the best thing to have done, but this is what I did anyway. I shut myself off from everyone and everything, like you were just saying. Yeah. It's kind of like, where's Hiba? Like, she's just disappeared. And I'm normally yeah. someone that's there. You know, everyone knows me. Yeah, you are, mashallah. Yeah. Yeah. So Baba Aww. works in Saudi Arabia. And I spent the last two winters, I was going to be there this winter, but COVID. Um, I spent the last, uh, like, four months there. Um, two winters ago last winter I spent six months there and it's in between the mountains I literally hid away from everyone I went into the mountains and I just did my healing it was like my rehab center and that was great and obviously it's close to Mecca and Medina well it's about half an hour away from Mecca so when I was well enough um, which wasn't that often but we were able to go and like do Umrah and that was really like that was just amazing for me um, but yeah I basically I surrounded myself with um healing stories so there's somebody who you would have seen her in my video and she's very prominent in the um, TSW community um yeah. Kara Wood she's the redhead um girl and so she had actually gone through her withdrawal in 2013 and finished in 2015 and she's written books on it and she's got her blog post and she's got her Instagram page and YouTube videos and I was obsessed with them looking at them every single day because I couldn't believe that someone could look like that and then become completely better like nothing ever happened so that kept me going mentally yeah. um the other thing was uh, she just popped up actually uh, there was somebody <laughs> called Zainab who about six months after I'd started she began her um topical steroids withdrawal journey and she had already had a youtube channel she was documenting it and because she's got a darker complexion that for me we we were able to because we ended up uh, connecting up to that we both went through the same like you know hyperpigmentation issues that you don't see in white skin and that's really concerning because i thought i was gonna have scarring for life and so we were just comparing notes um a lot of the time and it really helped to have someone that you felt like you were going through it with them and you didn't yeah. have to explain yourself all the time so it was really nice to get to know these girls you know during my journey um and then i mean first and foremost obviously the, like hiding away and taking all that time out of life was a really good opportunity for me to just take yeah. a step back out of everything that was such a distraction see life in a different way because you know I've gone from school to uni uni to work and then it was just sort of like 
go, 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 go. But then I had now just have all this time. Granted, it was a difficult time, but I did have all this time to now just, you know, get to know myself better, spend a lot of time with my parents um, at yeah. this age, at this stage, which I, I probably wouldn't have been able to do um, otherwise. And especially, you know, at the same time that things happen with your mom, Allah Rahma, it really mm. made me appreciate spending time with my own mom and my dad in that time. And they've been amazing. And um, mm. just getting to know, like, my deen, my faith in a different way, because, you know, all of the lessons that you learn before a calamity strikes and you you know all the stories and you know all of the advice but when something happens to you and you've seen them manifesting and coming to life and you've you've now realized that that's what this verse in the quran was talking about that's what this hadith was referring to that's what this story of the prophet that's how you know these lessons i can draw upon them it really did wonders for my, for my iman for my faith oh, so mentally i think that got me through it was still tough <laughs> But I do think that there's always blessings in um, difficult times. And for me to focus on those when things were getting difficult, really, I feel like it helped me to just, you know, push through and and just mm. be patient, you know, because it is hard. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. I'm just going to read some of these um, comments. Sorry, everyone. Um, I've not been reading them. So sorry. Um, Okay, natural, natural hair treats London. Uh, identify the triggers. Great advice, sis. Um, Aisha Khala, may Allah grant you total shifa to start. Uh, I mean, so amazing how your GP mom can help many others through your experience. Lots of love and du'as. Um, what allergy does the hyper uh, hyperpigmentation improve uh, yeah. then with time? Is yeah, it definitely does. It does have a look at my video um, it's an overview of TSW and it's um, on YouTube on the TSW Atlas channel I've got a whole section on hyperpigmentation and I've got an example of before and after and it's like I didn't think that you would ever be able to improve I'll put it up on my Instagram as well that specific picture but the, the hyperpigmentation caused so much so much anxiety for me because mm. with white skin I've seen people who are white go red mm. every year mm. in the summer right and then I've seen them <laughs> going back to being white after going red so I feel like if maybe I was white I might not have worried so much maybe I would but I wouldn't have worried that it would be permanent scarring right yeah. with the hyperpigmentation and I, I've never seen anything like it I had like <laughs> I got to the point my mom called me her Aww. little bed and which is Arabic for my little <laughs> my little aubergine you look at my skin color now and I went I'm not even joking I went like you know the color of an aubergine yeah really yeah, dark yeah, yeah I yeah. was that color um, wow. and it was just it was just everywhere and like I, I didn't even know I could get that stuck oh. it lasted a long time but alhamdulillah it's cleared up now um, yeah. I do have some areas like my hand is still you can see a little bit darker there and yeah. I've still got like the thickened sort of elephant skin but I mean I think my hands yes. will probably take the longest to heal because I use the medication on that the most but the hyperpigmentation goes away guys it just takes a long time um, but it does disappear Okay, alhamdulillah. Um, how, how is your skin now? My skin now? So I am, um, I don't know why, but every sort of November, like October, November time, I will start to slip into um, a cycle where it's my worst flares, right? And um, it, I was worried about this year. This is my fourth winter in TSW. So I have, like my fingers the other day, I had to sort of bandage them up because they were sort of splitting. But then it cleared up really quickly like usually mm. it would stay like that for months but um so I am getting like little symptoms like here and there <laughs> like on the you know my back I'd, I'd gotten some bad symptoms but then it calmed down um but for the most part I'd say 80 percent I'm I'm recovered I'm back to normal I just I'm look I just look like somebody who's got a bit of eczema now so I've gone back to how that looks and inshallah I hope that things will just continue to improve and then that yeah. will all disappear my, um, my thing is the swelling though I mean I know a lot of people don't really see it but um, if you've known me from before I always used to have a really long face and I've got a lot more eyelids than usual because of the swelling but um, yeah. that, that's what I'm dealing with at the moment but uh, that's that's okay compared to what I went through oh <laughs> mashallah honestly you're, just, you're yeah. such a warrior mashallah <laughs> Um, and the it's true whenever I have a flare with my health condition and I love listening to positive stuff that's the key uh -huh. um, what allergy said oh my god OMG you're HIPAA we've chatted yeah, hi, <laughs> um, I have very white uh, have very wit bits uh, but it's less dramatic on white skin bits of me don't tan now but maybe they will heal yeah 
Um, and keeping up with Steph says time is the biggest healer. It is. Um, uh, what eyelids? Yeah, tw- uh, twenty eyelids, man. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's swelling. We all go through either not being able to open our eyes, like it, it, it looks okay. At one point, I was worried to leave the house because I thought people would think that my parents are beating me up, and that's not even no. an exaggeration. Like I've got a friend, Amy, and she actually has been taken to the side and been asked, you know, is everything okay at home? Because with the swelling that happens around the eyes and as well, you, you've probably seen on my video, people look like they've got bruising and then the skin is mm. broken anyway. You feel like you've been in a fight that you haven't won, but you also look like it as well. And it's not that good. Yeah. But actually, this raises a good point. With yeah. children, um, mm. this is serious because when it gets to that stage with children, it doesn't take them long at all to get um, into topical steroid withdrawal. For normal, like for adults, it only takes a few weeks, but for children, it can happen in just days. So you really need to be careful about putting steroids on your children because when they start going into withdrawal, they look like they're being beaten up and abused at home. Not mm. only that, when you as a parent have been told that, no, when you as a parent express to your doctors that you're worried about putting steroids on, for the doctor that believes that the steroids are the only cure and they put you in the same category as the crazy hippie anti-vaxxers that don't want to listen to, um, you know, doctor's advice, people have had their children taken away from them and they have either been told that they need to come in so that the doctor can put the steroids on your child themselves, which is going to lead to more problems, or your children just get taken away from you and put into foster care and you get put down as being a neglectful parent. It's really traumatic for for the child and for the family to have that separation happen and to have Mm -hmm. that question mark put on you as a a parent. So there's so many things that you need to bear in mind with this because it's like it lasts for a long time. You look like you're deteriorating and especially if if it's a child situation, it can lead to so many other problems. I mean, for me, I went through it as an adult, so no one can really remove me from myself or from my mom, you know, yeah. but it's, it's something that we shouldn't have to go through. And um, I just want to say about, you know, steroids, right? Mm. Can we just consider the time, the era that these steroids were invented and they came to be used um, in medicine? Yeah. This was in the like 1940s, right? The late 40s, early 50s. 20 years before that, we still had this radium thing where we had, I don't know if you, if you know about it, but the radium, radium girls, and they even had this drink called Radio Thor, where it was like they would mix radium, which is a radioactive, really dangerous um, substance, and it was killing people. It makes your hair glow in the dark. They put it in beauty products. It was thought to be like this miracle thing, right? And um, people were dying from anemia and they were having, well, they had anemia, they had organ failures. They had all of this stuff happening to them. And yeah. it caused something called radioactive or radium jaw so their jaws would be necrotic and falling off because it would be attacking their bones but at the time it was considered to be amazing and they were touting it as like oh yeah this really great thing that everyone needs only you know after they saw people dying off from it then they Mm. stopped using that that was 20 years before steroids were introduced right yeah let's go a bit after steroids were introduced we have thalidomide being given for women in their um in pregnancy to cure their sickness i remember yeah it did cure their morning sickness, but it also caused them to have deformed babies. Mm. When they would flag this up, they were told that they were crazy. They were told, no, this isn't right. You know, the doctors have said it was fine. Science said it's fine. <laughs> you know, yeah. but like, we don't use that anymore. Go, go another 10 years, 20 years after that, right? So steroids are still in the mix. People, doctors were still recommending to smoke a fresh cigarette to cure your um, asthma. Wow. Okay, so obviously, <laughs> like this was just in the 60s. So now we know that that's complete, you know, that's, that's not, what we need to be doing at all like smoking is something that you should definitely avoid if you have asthma and it can mm. cause you to have problems it can give you cancer it can kill you right yeah. but there was a time where doctors were saying you like we recommend it to smoke a fresh cigarette for all of your lung ailments and your other health conditions yeah their roads came before that right and this was in the 40s <laughs> so and it was the late 40s in the early 50s there were the first papers that were um, put out there to say that there have been incidents where they've noticed that people are exhibiting addictive and withdrawal type um, presentations and symptoms. And it was causing widespread issues. And they were talking about all of the symptoms, you know, they were talking about the skin splitting and the swelling and the oozing and the crusting and the insomnia and the nerve damage. And they were talking about all of that and they said it shouldn't really, it shouldn't be used, but it continued to be used. From 70 years ago till now, they still say there's not enough research, sorry, into topical steroid withdrawal. So just continue to use it. And Mm. I'm thinking, well, it's been 70 years. There's been enough time to do research into it. Enough time. And the only research that they have done is weeks long or months long. 
and they say that's enough to to know the long-term effects however we've got doctors who keep prescribing it to the same person for decades mm, yeah. decades right i know people who've been on it for 50 years and that's not acceptable for the guidelines that stated that it should not be used more than seven days a lot of the time and then mm. you know unless your doctor says it's okay but the problem is doctors aren't made aware of it right because a lot of the time like my mom didn't know anything about it we didn't until i went through it a lot of the doctors that i've seen and talked to because of this including dermatologists have no idea what it is or mm. if they have come across it they've come across few studies here and there but then it's always coupled with yes take the patients off the steroids and give them a non-steroidal alternative which is an immunosuppressant immunomodulating agent a bio a modulator or whatever it is and it's like i i went down that route i stopped the steroids and i used an, an immunosuppressant and i still ended up where i was because you're ultimately you're suppressing your body's ability to to withdraw you know from these um really harmful drugs yes. and if you can if you consider that obviously a lot of the medical curriculums are funded and um sponsored by pharmaceutical companies yeah they're i was gonna say mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> they're not good well first of all they're not going to fund studies to incriminate themselves and to yeah. take away one of their biggest sources of income which is steroids because it's steroids in their right place used correctly are lifesavers and they're perfect and i would use them if i was having an allergic anaphylactic reaction to save my life because it's yeah. just cute for that time but it should not be used to manage a condition that it then turns it into being something chronic yeah. and then to use it for the rest of your life because what happens is once you've exhausted all the options with the steroids because it gets to a point where it doesn't work anymore but this is just shown to doctors and they're told this what you're seeing is worsening eczema whereas actually it's the presentation of topical steroid withdrawal right the most that they'll kind of maybe observe themselves is it looks like exfoliative dermatitis because that's it kind of matches those symptoms or it looks like other conditions or diseases but all of the time with these conditions the treatment for it is more corticosteroids basically mm. so just like you were saying about your husband's um i think colleague's brother you're kept in this yeah. cycle because they keep, keep keep using more steroids and it makes it worse yeah every mm -hmm. single time but then they blame us and they say you're using it too much or you're not using it enough you know but then the 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 reason it um is really important to be made aware of is because i'll tell you the conversation that i had when i went um to my dermatologist who did diagnose me with topical steroid withdrawal he was saying to me that okay well you've tried steroids and obviously you know they don't work anymore for you so let's not go down that route you've tried mm. um protopic which is one of the immunosuppressants and then that's caused you to have hyperhidrosis and nerve damage and like all of these things so there's other options and he listed out i think he said like cyclosporine methotrexate azathioprine pilomat, like all of these different ones in the same breath he said okay and then these can cause kidney damage liver failure infertility issues eyesight issues wow. cancer cancer right so he was just like so which one would you like to try and i was like none that's crazy that's after actually crazy that, well yeah no i was like after hearing all of that why would you think i want to use anything like this I've, I've already come off 10 years of using protopic which i shouldn't have been using it for that long anyway and there's a black box warning on it for causing lymphoma which is which is cancer so i've been on top of dealing with everything i was going through i've been always paranoid that oh i'm gonna get cancer because i thought i looked like i was dying at one point and just to put it into context eczema is not life-threatening guys so mm. for you to get to a point where you're sitting in a doctor's office unable to cope with life and leave the house and do anything with your life and being told to pick which organ you know, you want to uh, gamble with today. It's not right. Of this course. cannot be a treatment for eczema. Of course. If, if it's something like, okay, if you're, if you have cancer, if you have something that is life-threatening, and then you have to consider a drug which may cause other problems to your organs, it makes a little bit more sense in that context to then consider, okay, what's the the lesser of the two sort of evils, you know? <laughs> yeah. Give me my mild childhood eczema on my arms any day. I will deal with that for the. That's you can live with that. It's not easy but it's a lot easier than tsw let me tell you that <laughs> of course of course um subhanallah i'm just gonna read some of the comments here bar um apologies i'm i'm not really great at reading so sorry okay um let's see i think we stopped over here okay so uh, what energy say a fight was the uh, stories yes it is uh tsw mm -hmm. underscore bz buzz i look like i'd been in a fight too oh yeah, what that's, allergy? That's <laughs> oh they know okay um yeah, hadn't yeah. even thought of that scary uh you need to hide away um 
xxs underscore o x x underscore hey hiba uh, hey other lady Hi. also hey hey um thalimidite yes that drug doctors don't listen to us no they don't 40 years oh subhanallah 40 years mm. uh natural hair treats london that's big pharma yes um the mass is matching up more steroids more adult cases yes um xxs underscore oxx underscore i had my appointment with my new uh, dermat- dermatologist and he said well tsw is controversial and there's no such thing as st- steroid addiction wow right. this is something i want to talk about if that's all right yeah 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 Go on. why is it controversial there are eczema societies and organizations okay that when you try to appeal to them to discuss topical steroid withdrawal, they say, look, we understand that this is something that people go through, but we're not able to mention it, unfortunately, because it just, you know, sucks the air out of the room. It's just too extreme and it takes a focus away from eczema. My issue with that is I started out with eczema and a lot of people who have eczema are members of these eczema associations and organizations. And if you look at the treatment, right, if you anywhere in the world, the treatment for eczema is either before you look at drugs, it's, you know, figure out your, your um, triggers and then just, you know, like moisturizing and then soap substitutes, all of that stuff. But when you get to the point where you need medication, the medications are only steroids or immunosuppressants or these new immunomodulating drugs. Mm. Do you not think that with all of your members having eczema and potentially all of them being exposed to steroids at some point in their life, they are at the most high risk for developing topical steroid withdrawal. So mm. for you to then say you're not going to talk about it or to talk about it and then just sort of, uh, you know, we're going to say about it, you know, just going to mention it this way, but but we have to make it aware, you aware that it's because you're using it too much. We can't use something that's not in our position. If it's been prescribed to us and given to us by our doctors and we're using it according to what the doctors have told us to use it by, it's not an overuse problem, it's an overprescription problem. I know we are actually surrounded by a lot of steroids, but we are given the blame on that. And that's not acceptable. It's yeah. not controversial. It's something that it, it can destroy people's lives. It can destroy people's relationships. You just told me about a story that somebody yeah. has taken their own life. And yeah. I'm glad you told me yesterday because I was actually in bits about that. If you told me today, I don't, I would have just bored my eyes out in this, in this talk. But it's, it's not a light thing. And for them to yes. say that it's like, oh, it's just exaggerated. The thing is, if they talk about TSW, topical steroid withdrawal, what are the consequences of that? Probably many people who believe they have eczema right now will start to realize that the steroids are the problem and stop using it. You will lose a lot of members of your eczema association. You will lose a lot of money, you know, if you're somebody who's making money off steroids or immunosuppressants. As a doctor, what do you, you don't really have many other options in how you can treat a patient. Because if a patient's coming to you for for treatment and you say to them i don't have anything for you then that that also is a difficult position to be in so it it is controversial because they're making it controversial not because we're experiencing the adverse effects and trying to bring it to light and and we're always being we're always being shut down we're always being told not to talk about it we're always being told there's not enough evidence for it is there's not enough evidence for it on purpose because they've had time like i said to to actually make studies uh, to mm-hmm. t- look into this issue but it's not it's not helpful for them so they just allow us all to believe that we have worsening eczema this is not eczema, eczema yeah, definitely is- not eczema no that no. is not eczema no way and and it makes me oh. really upset and angry for especially for people whose babies are going through this yes you know? Yes, I have a friend of mine, her daughter must be about four years old now and um, yeah her eczema is just getting worse um Subhanallah. But that's one of the, you know, yeah. when you do have worsening eczema without having used steroids, that could be exposure to triggers like we were talking about. Mm. But if, the, if you have ever used steroids and you're noticing the eczema is getting worse, you may want to consider that it could be topical steroid withdrawal because yeah. did you know before the 1940s, adults didn't even have eczema? It was yeah, but you told me eczema. once. Yes, yes. Yeah, you told was, me it was purely known as being a childhood thing that people grow out of. And that's why we hear doctors saying to us, yeah, you might grow out of this, you'll grow out of this. And they'll tell you year after year, you'll grow out of this. And that came from somewhere that came from the truth from past, you know, what people used Mm. to go through. But then if you look at the numbers, like if you do the epidemiology of it, and then you have a look at the, um, the numbers of how people are now adults are getting eczema diagnoses, it's exponentially shooting through the roof at the same time that steroids are being 
you know the the sale of snow is mm. increasing yes. it doesn't take it's, it's not difficult to see what's happening yeah, unfortunately not at all at all and, um, sad subhanallah yeah no um, but also the fact that this can happen without having prior eczema like i was saying before yeah so what's happening now and this is where it is actually controversial i'm going to spin it on its head and say why it's actually controversial for us as consumers or of these products is because you've now got doctors very famous doctors with you know youtube channels and um very big instagram platforms and stuff selling hydrocortisone and calling it oh making cortisone cool you know yeah. and oh it's a dream cream and going on the ellen show and handing them out as if it's just candy or sweets yes this is a drug this is a medication you know if i if I, as a dentist now, decided I'm going to start selling amoxicill amoxicillin and start saying, oh, Hibba's making antibiotics awesome, you know, and, and, and marketing it like it's a beauty product and giving it to the Kardashians and, you know, doing all of this. This is unacceptable. <laughs> I don't understand yeah, why this is allowed to happen. So then, um, you know, this, it's being pushed more and more and more. And they're saying that you can use it for things like sunburn and insect bites and things that we know clear up by themselves. Mm. You don't need to use it for sunburn. They're being okayed to be used on the face somewhere you should never use steroids first of all you know and so if you have a look like on instagram though it's terrible they're selling even this thing called corti balm which is cortisone in a lip balm for chapped lips and oh, they say wow you can use it. yeah it's terrible they say you can use it after you've had herpes um simplex you know like cold sores yeah yeah but then after using it you can then set off it's like a ticking time bomb where not only are you at more risk uh, for topical steroid withdrawal but you can actually end up um, being more at risk for eczema herpeticum which can lead to organ failure and even death so, in some oh, rare cases oh, that's crazy they're, they're being really irresponsible with it and then they're saying it's controversial it, they oh, need to they need to yeah. really revise how eczema has been treated and how they're treating steroids in general because this yeah they're I putting agree. Too many people at risk yeah. You know what, it's so true. There are so many things out there in, in social media where they have like uh, different products and they say, oh, this helps clear out your eczema. Um, this helps out with any kind of you know, skin condition that you have. I remember one being like an orange one. I don't know if you've seen it. It's like an orange, orange colored, I think it is the actual cream. And I remember it just going completely viral on social media. And a few mums had bought it for their, for their child and it had cleared within yeah, days. Wow. Um, now it's making me worried when I'm listening to you. Um, I can tell you about the orange cream. Oh, yes, please. Exactly yes, please. Yeah, I made on. a post about it, but I'm going to actually, um, I'm coming for them, inshallah. I'm going to make a video and the community are going to um, also start, you know, trying to appeal to them to, to market their products responsibly. So Sheikh Salama in Medina is actually behind the orange cream, which upsets me because the majority of the communities that they sell this to do tend to be in areas which have like quite high Muslim population. And then it's just like, you're being really dishonest with the fact that they did lab studies on it. And I have the lab report. It's found to contain clobetazole propionate, which is the most, it's the most potent steroid. It's not even mm -hmm. any steroid, the most no. potent steroid. Yeah. And so, and also it's in things called, you know, the Adibo cream, you could find it in a lot of African hair shops and things like yeah. that. A lot of traditional Chinese herbal medicines, it's got clobetazole in it as well. Like this oh. is a known thing in dermatology. They will say that, oh, you know, mm -hmm. natural products aren't always good because it can worsen your eczema. Sometimes they've got hidden steroids like these things. But the orange cream, the reason it upsets me is because they market it specifically to say, yes, if you use like, orange cream, I've just seen a, a, um, a comment, stop using it, honey, it's got clobetazole in it. It's, it's the worst steroid. Yeah. Um, they market it as being herbal only steroid free and they put steroid free in red big red letters right and if it clears you up like that chances are it is not only a steroid it's a strong steroid so you need to be careful with that and i know somebody whose daughter unfortunately is going through a topical steroid withdrawal um after only using yeah abido cream as well the white and blue tub after only using orange cream for a couple of weeks if that if mm. you see her right now she's got no skin on her face she's got open oh. wounds like is is just is just terrible and they're marketing it to be like a safe you know uh it's a safe herbal cream they say that it's got petroleum jelly in it and saffron and they big up the healing properties of saffron some people say they've read rocket into it which is a lie mm. as in they might have but that's not what's healing you but then yeah, they'll say course. stuff like oh the doctor has a um secret recipe that he uses or he's got a special oh. ingredient like it's kfc or something right yeah exactly that hidden and the thing is the people selling it unfortunately a lot of the time they are not even aware of what but how can they get away with saying that it's steroid free 
because it's not regulated they make it and they oh. sell it sort of it's, it's not going through the same routes that um other products here or even um, medicines go through oh. you know but saying that i don't know if you know i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right but mario badescu is the um it's a known skincare sort of or like cosmetic brand um recently <laughs> there was a lawsuit put on them because two of their creams had undisclosed ingredients in mm. them which were two different steroids i think one was hydrocortisone and one was triamcinolone again very strong steroids oh, um, right. yep and then even i think something i heard about their rose water spray also had hidden steroids in it but a lot wow. of their um, consumers who'd used it found that actually yeah it was clearing them up really quickly because that's how steroids work right and you think it's great and you carry on yeah but then as soon as they stopped using it some of them they, they mentioned that they had um Cushing syndrome, which is what you get after too much exposure to usually oral steroids. So it must have been a lot. Um, but they were going through all of these um, withdrawal symptoms. And they, I think that they won the case, actually. So then they okay. ended up coming out and saying, yeah, sorry, we didn't disclose that it's got steroids in it. But wow. like, there's a lot of this happening. So it might not mm. always be the doctor's fault. This is something I wanted to highlight as well. The doctors might see you after you haven't had any steroids prescribed by them but you may have unknowingly exposed yourself to a lot of steroids believing that you're using natural and herbal products right yeah. and then they're seeing you at a point where nothing they're doing to help but nothing they're doing to prescribe is helping you when they try the low dose hydrocortisone it's not really calming it down when they mm -hmm. then try and give you like a big dose of oral steroids it's not really calming you down you're presenting in all these you know really strange um symptoms that don't quite match anything that they're familiar with so this is a whole system failure of how yeah, steroids are just definitely. out there. You know, I can't believe that. It's quite scary. It is. It um, is. We, we need to like spread the words about that orange cream. Definitely. Uh, Natural Hair Treats London, they make money off people being ill, so they won't withdraw it. Methotrexate didn't help me. Also, or as directed, negates the use only for seven days, so that's how they get out that one. Um, or allergy, oh, you're not using it right. You're not you you need to use more i was told to put it on like a slick of cream um they mm -hmm. need you to be they need you to depend on the suppressants very true hiba i wrote you a poem about this ah oh. uh keeping yeah. up with stuff i had exactly the same conversation about the immunos and refused them well done what allergy is called what about this is okay um and it's life-threatening chronic eczema is not a life um whole francis if someone had to have a, a storage injection years after they are through withdrawal do you think it would send them back into a draw what do you so, think about? dr rapaport mentioned that um dr rapaport by the way he's one of the um leading doctors in this um in topical steroid withdrawal in fact his videos were one of the reasons i kept it together mentally because he explained everything that was going on and it made so much sense he mentioned that out of all the thousands of patients he's treated in his early years half of the time when um some of the patients who've been out of withdrawal they finished with it you know um they tried to use steroids again for whatever reason they ended up having a rebound and going right back into withdrawal which is a shame to have gone through all of that suffering and end up having to go through it again but he said other times it ended up not being too bad the issue is because we don't have much research on it there's not it's, it's not really something that I can say for sure unless you've maybe come across someone who's been through that experience and they can share with you what it was like for them but I'm not sure exactly I mean for me personally they've put it down on my records now never give me stories <laughs> you know <laughs> because um oh yeah. I need to tell you about my doctor's appointment actually because this was the inspiration for my video okay. and um so after all of the you know not really having a great time going to the gps and, and dermatologists and trying to show them what's happening and they're just telling me it's just eczema it's just eczema um i eventually found a dermatologist to diagnose me with topical steroid withdrawal despite that my gps saw the letter they were like hmm not very really familiar with this we're just gonna write you a sick note for like eczema and i was like i, I paid money to see this dermatologist so that you can put down the correct you know, because I had to apply for universal credit. I wasn't working. I was so broke, right? And yeah. they kind of thought that I didn't want to work. Um, and I was like, I don't think... Okay, well, universal credit, you only get like £400 in a month. Yeah. Like, I could work as a dentist and I could be quite comfortable, you know, and Exactly. It's not something that I want to... Yeah, I mean, it's not... And it wasn't fun putting clothes on when my skin just couldn't cope with 
anything to do it. and going to the job center in Halsden and like that was a bit of a grimy place as well like you know <laughs> but um so I thought after so many failed appointments I was like how am I going to get through to my doctor because sh- like I look okay that's the thing it was a blessing but also it was difficult when I was trying to convince people that I'm really not well um because my face wasn't that affected and obviously alhamdulillah like you know being covered up I have a new appreciation for hijab because it allowed me to just go through it privately and no one had to stare at my skin and make me feel you know like self-conscious but anyway I noticed that when I sent pictures to you for example and my other friends that was when people really got it and they were just like oh okay right I'm gonna stop suggesting you try coconut oil sorry because I can see this is probably this is a lot more than I thought it actually was yeah (laughs) so then I made the powerpoint presentation of myself as a case presentation I made it last for seven minutes and I gave her three minutes of question time at the end as per NHS 10 minute GP appointments um I turned up and I feel like we were a bit sick of each other at this point because we just we weren't really meeting eye to eye so when I came to see her she was like hi how can I help you today I (laughs) whipped out my laptop and I presented it like a case presentation like it was just a medical case and I think she was a bit worried that I was gonna turn it legal but I was like no don't worry it's none of that but then as she saw it like she she you know she just put all of her stuff down and she was in shock and she was just like I get it now like what is this so I even put the dates of when I got my dermatologist to write the letter and when I'd come to see them and one of the local GP is just trying to convince me this is low vitamin d or something even though my legs were like tree trunks but she requested that that powerpoint so she could go and educate other doctors from it she's like I've never seen this yeah. I like and I'm glad you've shown me because I think I've seen other people where I've thought it was um where I thought it was eczema, but I'm, I'm yeah. really conscious now that I'm giving them steroids. And oh, actually, that's amazing. I'm just trying to show them what's happening and they're just telling me it's just eczema, it's just eczema. Um, I eventually found a dermatologist to diagnose me with topical steroid withdrawal. Despite that, my GPs saw the letter. They were like, hmm, not very familiar with this. We're just going to write you a sick note for like eczema. And I was like, I, I paid money to see this dermatologist so that you can put down the correct, you know, because I had to apply for universal credit. I wasn't working. I was so broke, right? And yeah. they kind of thought that I didn't want to work. Um, and I was like, I don't think, okay, well, universal credit, you only get like 400 pounds in a month. Yeah. Like I could work as a dentist and I could be quite comfortable, you know, alhamdulillah. Exactly. Like, it's not something that I want to, yeah, I mean, it's not, and it wasn't fun putting clothes on when my skin just couldn't cope with anything to it. and going to the job center in Halsden and like that was a bit of a grimy place as well like you know <laughs> but um so I thought after so many failed appointments I was like how am I going to get through to my doctor because she, like I look okay that's the thing it was a blessing but also it was difficult when I was trying to convince people that I'm really not well um because my face wasn't that affected and obviously alhamdulillah like you know being covered up I have a new appreciation for hijab because it allowed me to just go through it privately and no one had to stare at my skin and make me feel you know like self-conscious but anyway I noticed that when I sent pictures to you for example and my other friends that was when people really got it and they were just like oh okay right I'm gonna stop suggesting you try coconut oil sorry because I can see this is probably this is a lot more than I thought it actually was yeah (laughs) so then I made the powerpoint presentation of myself as a case presentation I made it last for seven minutes and I gave her three minutes of question time at the end as per NHS 10 minute GP appointments um I turned up and I feel like we were a bit sick of each other at this point because we just we weren't really meeting eye to eye so when I came to see her she was like hi how can I help you today I (laughs) whipped out my laptop and I presented it like a case presentation like it was just a medical case and I think she was a bit worried that I was gonna turn it legal but I was like no don't worry it's none of that but then as she saw it like she she, you know she just put all of her stuff down and she was in shock and she was just like I get it now like what is this so I even put the dates of when I got my dermatologist to write the letter and when I'd come to see them and one of the local GP is just trying to convince me this is low vitamin d or something even though my legs were like tree trunks but she requested that that powerpoint so she could go and educate other doctors from it she's like I've never seen this yeah. I like and I'm glad you've shown me because I think I've seen other people where I've thought it was um where I thought it was eczema but I'm I'm yeah. really conscious now that I'm giving them steroids and oh actually, that's amazing yeah. yeah so I was really happy to do that and I said I'm happy to come in to a staff meeting if you want and like <laughs> yeah. And yeah we were gonna do it actually but then lockdown happened but then that gave me the idea I was just like look 
I'm mm. from like a medical family. I've yes, had um, so training sure. where, you know, we can speak at a similar level, me and the GP, like in that context. And it was still hard. I could only imagine for people that don't have, um, mm. you know, science background, medical background, dental background or whatever, it's even more difficult to get through um, yes. to the doctors about this. So that's where I got the inspiration for my video for. And I was like, what if um. I just do a huge PowerPoint presentation slide and I'll show everything i'll show babies, yes. children adults i'll show men women i'll show people of different skin colors i'll show animals in there because it's happened to people's pets as well and i'll present it medically and i'll just put it out there and then it's actually had a really good response from medics alhamdulillah <laughs> so alhamdulillah i watched the whole yeah. thing as well mashallah very educational yeah, um i really recommend <laughs> like anyone who hasn't watched it um go on to tsw was it underscore atlas is that the yeah. Yeah, so That's go on to that, inshallah. Question. Yeah, go on to her in that Instagram page, inshallah, and you'll be able to access uh, the the video that that we're talking about. It's very very educational. I really recommend you to also forward it to all your contacts, just to kind of raise awareness uh, about uh, TSW. Um, okay, thank you for your questions, guys. And and again, I'm so sorry for being not great at reading them uh, as you've sent them. Uh, Hiba, it's we are on the same healing path. No, 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 it's me as well. Um, he said it's controversial because uh, the people who first spoke, spoke about it wrote a couple of articles and then stopped. I said, well, there's so many people going through the process just like me. You're clearly just giving uh, steroids to suppress it and not uh, curing it. Um, I wish they understand this. So true. Hiba, you speak so much sense. <laughs> uh, I can't see babies with it. So heartbreaking. Well, that's crazy. Just shows... Uh, what a money-making system it is. Don't talk to me about super cortisone. It should be illegal and on babies. Uh, lip balm, wait, what? No. Uh, Hold Francis. My doctor told me it was safe to use Elecon cream around my eyes and all over my face every day. Wow. Oh, uh, no. OMG, the orange cream, saffron balm, no, 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 no. I use the orange cream. Does it have steroid? Yes, it does. And Abido cream, white and blue tub. Yeah, so MG, I stopped any creams when I started TSW because doing NMT as well. Chinese cream, yellow tube of red, black Chinese writing. Uh, my heart, thank God I stopped using it. That's so sad, OMG. I can't believe this. I can't hear this. Oh, who regulates this? The best thing, use any use uh, anything natural, um, keeping up with stuff. I got it gifted to me on Instagram and used it on my face once, not knowing it had stored in it and it burned. Oh, no. Yeah, she told the me guy... about the orange cream. Yeah. Oh, okay. The guy who sold me, it was 100% sure they had no steroid in it when I asked him. No cosmetic safe testing, not at all. Um, yep, and this is a big, big cosmetic company. I'm now scared to trust any brands. Yes. Um, this makes so much sense. They changed the formula in the Mario Badescu, which had no storage. Uh, that's how they went into withdrawal. Uh, it was by accident. They should not be able to buy storage to use in unregulated medication. Yes, definitely the word needs to be spread about orange cream. Agree here about OMG. I wasted so much money on it before TSW. I thought it was magic. So don't me. <laughs> oh. You didn't know any better, sis. Um, yeah. don't, don't think well. Don't, don't speak about yourself in that way. Um, I was given a foam that I put on my head then sh showered so my entire body was covered with steroids. Oh, no. Uh, a lot of us are told by our doctors at some point, you know what, if the steroids help, just use it like a moisturiser. And they no. give this tramcinolone, trans almost 500 gram tubs that people are given, and they're told, use this every day like a moisturiser. It's a strong moisturiser. And then when they stop responding to it because you know you build up a dependency yeah. and then you need more to get the of same course. effect then you're told oh it's because you used it too much it's so way, frustrating cream, it is called the orange cream i just saw holly she asked the question yeah it's just oh, called okay. the orange cream yeah uh ruth they probably don't even buy it they can probably uh, create it in a lab uh, anyone can make stories in a lab yeah it looks like it it's a chemical. You can make anything if you have the right components. To honest, it's synthetic, so created. Mine was mostly on my face. No hiding that. Vitamin D, I know. So, hey, so amazing, Hiba. My dermatologist needs to watch your video. I think they all do. Uh, such an inspiration. Aisha, wow, that's amazing. Go, sister Hiba. Mashallah, so proud of you. Keep up the fantastic job in raising awareness. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, natural Hair good. Treats London. Alhamdulillah, sis, that's amazing. You were able to educate her so that she was inspired to educate her colleagues, mashallah. 
Yeah. And I want to see it. Yeah, so just go over to TSW underscore Atlas and inshallah she should, she should uh, get to it. Um, I've saved it on my highlights. That's good. Uh, the presentation is amazing. So grateful for your work. Yeah, it's absolutely great. I have to go, but we'll be sharing this live if you save it. Yes, it will be saved. Okay, so it'll be saved on herstory.inspires. Please do share it with everybody. Um, take care, Ruth. Lovely connecting with you. Uh, whole Francis, uh, what is the orange cream called? Okay, we just said the orange cream. Yeah, the orange cream. Uh, I was told by two different doctors to use hydrocortisone and Umovate, like a moisturizer on my face. Oh, it is. When I was in full mm -hmm. on my face, not knowing it. Oh, that's crazy. And I've learned face. so much today. <laughs> oh, the face, days. right? It's got one of the highest... Um, absorbency rate so i think it's like 30 percent the face mm. of the groin region that's why it specifically say, says do not use it on the face but then it also says unless your physician directs otherwise or unless if, and if your doctor says it's okay for mm. any doctors who are watching this please 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 i urge you to go and have a look into what topical steroid withdrawal is there's a website it's called itsan itsan you can have a look at my video there's uh, a new website being put up it's called scratch that it's a uk based one the, and there are plenty of um, papers, medical literature on this back from the 50s and in the 70s it was you know, explicitly st uh, stated as being topical steroid withdrawal yeah. um, and you know, since then there's not really been too much because you know, like I said they've not really funded any studies into it if they do fund studies into it it's to make new drugs to counteract the effects of it so you're off one drug onto another so you know, they don't lose money that way but um, please educate yourselves on it because if you're one of the doctors who are prescribing them to people and from your training and from what you've been told and what you have seen clinically, it appears to be working and you're going against the guidelines. <clears throat> um, you are prescribing it for longer than seven days. You're allowing people to use it on the face, on the groin region and on their babies, which it shouldn't be used for children under the age of 10 anyway. Please look at what can happen so that you can let the patients know that this is a risk, but also for yourself to recognize it. And maybe you're going to be less likely to then keep saying it's okay to use it in these instances where it really shouldn't be used like that at all um mm. because it, it is a big trauma it is a big trauma that people go through you know and their children because of it um definitely i don't think i can i can you know uh articulate it in just a short amount of time the effects that it can people and their families um and even you know my doctor because i i went and i uh, showed a different gp as well the um the case presentation and um she cried you know, and she was like, I'm usually quite good at keeping this all together, but I literally had no idea about this. And now, and then you start to question yourself as a medic, like I've been prescribing this to people and look at this, you know, what it can do. And yeah. it is common. They say it's rare, but it's not rare. Actually, it's, it's very common. Um, and a lot of people still are unaware that they're in it, but you can't say definitively that something is rare when you're saying there's not enough she was like i'm usually quite good at keeping this all together but i literally had no idea about this and now and then you start to question yourself as a medic like i've been prescribing this to people and look at this you know what it can do and yeah. it is common they say it's rare but it's not rare actually it's, it's very common um and a lot of people still are unaware that they're in it but you can't say definitively that something is rare when you're saying there's not enough evidence there's not enough studies to support it there's not enough research because what are you basing that on then? Mm. You know, a lot of the time it's a dismissal to us to say it's actually very rare. You can't say that for a fact because there's not enough research. Yeah, it. exactly. You know, ITSAN have recently conducted a survey and so the results should come out after they've done data analysis into that. But again, that's just a starting point. We're going to yeah. need a lot more studies and it's only a survey. They're going to need to actually look at it in a lab and to do yeah, long-term studies on it. Um, it is it is it's a big um big problem. Definitely. Um just reading the last few comments just come in now. Um uh, uh, Okay, so the Nash Cat, my babes, uh keeping up with Steph saying yes, yeah, so we listen and we're desperate at that time, it's so bad. Uh Janelle's just souls. I was given a story uh, self, especially for my eyes. Uh, nerds by uh, apologies if I'm not saying saying your names correctly guys um, I recently got an allergy test done after they were done my back was full of hives and even after sharing that I don't want to use uh, steroids they almost slathered my back in hydrocortisone oh wow uh, the Nash Cat may Allah be incredibly pleased with you I mean um, oh, XXX 
Um, my doctor on Monday said, well, if you don't want to use storage, uh, do you want proper <laughs> protopic <laughs> instead? I was like, hell no. Yeah, no. Hell no. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, yeah, TSW underscore busy buzz. Um, they did that to me after my allergy test on my arm. This was before I started withdrawal. However, thank goodness. Wow. They use it for so many things, by the way. So for the allergy test, obviously, you're going to expect if you're quite, you know, an allergic person, you might come out in hives. And even, you know, some people, they just got that thing called um, skin, is it demographia or something? Like, you know, if you take a pencil mm. like that, then your skin, mm. you know, people used to write letters. Oh, okay. In yeah, their yeah, 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 yeah. So, Demographia, I think it's called. So they will just give you hydrocortisone to just, you know, calm it down. Wow. But you don't need that much exposure to hydrocortisone for everything. Like they give it to people after tattoos. They give it to people after they, they. Oh, this is a new thing that they say after you've waxed or after you've shaved, especially on your delicate areas. You know, on uh, Instagram, there's a midwife and she's telling people just use hydrocortisone, wow. and you absolutely should not use it, especially after you've just removed the top layer of your skin. So it's going to mm -hmm. get directly into your bloodstream. And yeah. by the way, hair removal is not a one-time thing, as we all know. So mm. every time after you shave or every time after you've waxed, you're going to use it. Like you're, good, mm. you're asking for problems in such a thin-skinned area with a lot of heat there and a lot of blood vessels and a very yes. high absorbency region. Mm -hmm. You don't need to use hydrocortisone after shaving. You know, you can use you can use anything else that's not steroids. You can use aloe vera. You can just you can leave it to do its own thing. Yeah. You know? So yes, yeah. Or just use olive just, oil. Olive oil. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you're not worried about side effects. Um, uh, keeping up with Steph is saying we've got her to take the post down. Good. Oh, that's good. good. Excellent. Nice. That's good. That's good. Yes. Um, nerds buying lessons. The hives went away after 15 minutes on their own. I was so mad. They wanted to yeah. use them. Yeah, that's crazy. Because, so I've had allergy testing done as well. Patch testing mm. on my back. And you know when they, on the arm, they... Um, they test you for different allergens, food allergens. And they say don't take antihistamines before, um, you know, so that you can actually see what you're allergic to. Mm. Something, when you're in TSW though, you're more prone to being allergic or having allergic type reactions to things that are not actually true allergens for you. And mm. after withdrawal, you end up not being allergic to them actually most of the time. Dr. Okay. Rappaport did say that um, a lot of the time people will get allergies or become hypersensitive and hyperreactive to things during their withdrawal. But then afterwards, mm. unless it's a true allergy like my nut allergy, which is anaphylactic, then that's probably not going to change. But other things, they, they, they can calm down, actually. But you're, you're, with allergy testing during TSW, you mm. might get a lot of false positives. And, and then something that ends up happening, right? Because we have all been conditioned a lot of the time not to question the drugs and to think if your skin's having a bad time, maybe it's because you're stressed or you've got hormone imbalance or um, you, something in your environment, in your diet whatever it might be so you end up getting almost into this kind of obsessive stage where you're trying to eliminate anything that could be causing you to be reacting mm. or to have an eczema flare and I know with myself I ended up um, I mean this wasn't necessarily a bad thing but I ended up having like the cleanest diet exercising making sure I didn't have any stress trying my best to just you know get rid of any sort of allergens and I was blaming so many things in my environment to the point where mm. I became a bit food phobic and this isn't like this is quite a common thing a lot of people they get scared to eat anything or to try something yeah. new you know because they think it's just going to make me flare when in reality my body was trying to go into withdrawal from having that dependency mm. of um the medication that i was using so you know once i just discovered that's what my issue was um i ditched my diet <laughs> i ditched my uh yeah. <laughs> yeah, good because yeah. i was like i'm already miserable <laughs> I'm gonna have the food that makes me happy right now because <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> like, yes, definitely. You know, yeah, and alhamdulillah, I've been healing, so yeah, yeah it's working. It's working. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, uh, nerds, uh, bionism saying, yeah, yikes, uh, I'll have to re redo the tests a few years later. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm so glad you said this here, but it makes so much sense. I eat whatever I want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. What an amazing conversation today. I've learned so much. It's been so interesting. Um, and I'm, I, so I'm really that you actually honest. asked me to come on here. Oh, no, no, no. It's my pleasure. My <laughs> absolute pleasure. Um, I wanted to just kind of just wrap up today mm. uh, by asking you um, to share three things you would share with your younger self or maybe yourself three, four years ago wherever you feel like okay so 
I think this is this can be useful for anyone who's got any sort of difficulty whether it's illness whether it's something like a delay in your life for something or maybe things haven't worked out how you wanted it to when I look back now at like my early 20s or like my teen years the things that I thought I wanted my life to look like with the decisions I thought I was really sure on in life if that actually was allowed to manifest you know and if Allah has actually granted me those things that I thought I wanted at the time right now I know that I I'm really happy I actually didn't like out like that because um the way that I was thinking back in them days um I don't agree with myself actually <laughs> with a lot mm. of the things that I thought was best for me or I thought I wanted in life or the route that I wanted to take in life back back then so the same way that you probably also have things in your life when you're looking back on them and you think you know what when I was disappointed that this thing didn't work out or life took this turn when I wasn't expecting it to and then later on when you look back you think oh that needed to happen like that and I'm actually really grateful that happened like that I've learned so much from it I can see all these blessings from it I've become a better person in this way because of it just know that this is another one of those things if you're going through a topical steroid withdrawal or if you're going through anything else in a similar fashion and you know I do believe that like just allowing yourself to not go with the flow but just accept that you know you do your bit but then you just see what life is gonna um, end up uh, you know throwing away or what Allah has decreed for you yeah you you will set yourself up for less disappointment if you just kind of know and you tell yourself that there is good in this and it's not all bad all the time. So looking back, obviously, I would tell myself to put the steroid creams down. <laughs> Stop yeah. using them. That's mm. something I would say. I would also maybe tell myself to um, research a little bit more into the medications that I've been um, recommended by my doctors. But a lot of us don't think to do that because we think asking the doctors is our research. But this has taught me now to always do my own research and to question how things work because if i knew back then that the way it's working is to just suppress i'd understand it's not actually a solution and you know again taking away the steroid situation anything in life if you've just slapped a band-aid on it whether it's your emotions you're not dealing with them right now or if there's a problem that you're just sort of burying your head in the sand for so it feels like it's better but it's still then came back obviously i would tell myself to put the steroid creams down <laughs> Stop yeah. using them. That's mm. something I would say. I would also maybe tell myself to um, research a little bit more into the medications that I've been um, recommended by my doctors. But a lot of us don't think to do that because we think asking the doctors is our research. But this has taught me now to always do my own research and to question how things work. Because if I mm. knew back then that the way it's working is to just suppress, I'd understand it's not actually a solution. And you know again taking away the steroid situation anything in life if you've just slapped a band-aid on it whether it's your emotions you're not dealing with them right now or if there's a problem that you're just sort of burying your head in the sand for so it feels like it's better but it's still there and it's probably growing you're mm. gonna have to face it one day and it's a lot less painful if you just deal with it at the start you prevent it actually from the start as much as possible whether it's eczema <laughs> turning into TSW whether mm. it's an argument or a breakdown of relationship with someone whatever it might be prevention is always better than cure knowledge is you know power and just doing your own research and just knowing that whatever happens is always going to end up being good because there's going to be good that's coming out of it and yeah it's, and also it's not your fault right so I just wanted to put that out there for any parents if your kids are going through this or if your parents or people even my age it's not your fault you just went to the doctor like you're supposed to as a loving kind caring parent doing what you thought was best so don't blame yourself no point feeling guilty won't change anything anyway and mm. all we can do is just look forward and make better sort of um decisions from this point on okay that's what i would say <laughs> thank you that's, that's beautiful um okay so people are just uh, saying thank you so much to you uh to you oh, oh you're, well, you're very welcome but saying thanks to both of us oh thank you you're um, <laughs> thank you both for doing this live Hibba, you're such an inspiration knowledgeable mashallah may Allah grant you both good health i mean and same for you um, um alhamdulillah absolute pleasure um one last question before you go yep. um if you had to pick just one person who's been an absolute rock in your life who would that be and why my mama <laughs> <laughs> not too hard yeah, that, yeah. My okay mom, and why even now i probably know baby. yeah no i mean i don't think we can ever really like oh. you know with our mums um you know barakalo 
for your mama and everything but like mama honestly like all my life anyway she's just been there for me but during this process when I say I got to a point where I couldn't use my hands mama became my hands right um, when I couldn't walk anywhere or do anything for myself she became my legs for me she would do everything like it, I felt awful I felt like I was a baby again and she was doing all of that for me and like now she's with me here in London and my dad's in Saudia my brother's in Bristol doing his thing and like I'm stuck at the hip with my mum I think she might have you know she's she's just going through it all with me but she's never once made me feel like this is too much for her she's never shown me that she's cried even because of it and I know she has because my dad's told me that they do they cry together (laughs) but I I wouldn't have been able to do this without my mom and it goes for my dad as well and it goes for my brother and like all of my friends and and everything but I do have to just give mama props because like she's doing so much (laughs) definitely <laughs> yeah i mean men accept it from her and grant for the dose like he said um yeah. <laughs> i mean oh, thank you, mashallah. honestly it's been such an amazing live um subhanallah Thanks, I just, everyone. you know and definitely we want you back again in the future inshallah Hiba, I'll be uh, happy to join to. us um inshallah. if there's any more questions um let us just you know um you can either message uh hiba directly or you can message us uh, um you know at her story dot inspires and we'll pass it on to hiba and um, this live will be saved um on igtv after it finishes so you'll be access if you should be able to access it within five ten minutes um of this live ending um it will also be available across all our uh, podcast platforms and you can access that through the link in our bio and it will be also uh, available on youtube sometime next week um right so we've come to the end of the episode and we want to thank all of you for being such an amazing amazing um you know guests and just sharing and commenting and participating in the in the conversation and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from Hiba and to bless her and her family and to grant her a swift recovery and for all of you who are on this journey um, you know, of TSW. I hope that it will be a, a very quick recovery and all of you will be on, on the other side. And you know what? Maybe one day we'll have you guys here as guest speakers uh, talking about your journey. Um, uh, that's it. We'll end uh, it tonight. We'll end it for here for tonight. Uh, take care, everybody. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much, Hannah. Barakallahu fiki. My pleasure. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bye.